Hello and welcome to my workshop and today I've got some wolf pendants that I wanted to show you and I hope my webcam is going to zoom in on. This is a solid sterling silver wolf that I make and this one has got some brown smoky quartz eyes. I think I'm like a lot of people in that wolves are certainly one of my favourite animals. I think if they are not the kind of link we have to the wilderness they're certainly a reminder that there's still a kind of wild world of nature out there. They were always the predators that people could hear howling in the next valley or um, the animal whose footprints they found around the outside of their camps just far enough for the firelight not to reach. And of course when civilization has to take a step back wolves do come in to fill the void uh, there's certainly a healthy pack of wolves around Chernobyl now the people have left there now this wolf is one that's essentially been handmade I guess you'd call it like a small production run where you make an original and then work on each piece that you make from it um, I'll explain to you kind of how that's done so you'd start off by getting a piece of wax and carving the wolf from it by hand. Um, a lot of jewellery, silver kind of sculptural jewellery that you find today has actually been designed on computer and then 3D printed um, and there's nothing wrong with that. I, I'm not a Luddite, I've got computer modelling programs myself and I like them very much. Um, but there is an issue with people selling 3D printed items as handmade jewellery. Um, I mean a, it's dishonest, and B, I think it kind of devalues digital art as an art form, so, you know, why do it? Um, but, in truth, I just prefer carving things by hand, so that's what I do. Anyway, unfortunately, you, um, you lose the original wax pattern that you've made when you uh, start making the silk ones. You set the wax in, kind of looks like a drain pipe, uh, which gets filled with an investment powder, plaster. You heat the plaster, the, pla the wax melts, then molten silver gets poured into the hole and fills the void that the melted wax has left, and you end up with a silver casting. This one's not a wolf, it's actually a lynx, but I can, uh, I can show you that. That's what, the, uh, that's what the original silver casting looks like. And once you've got that, you can make a mould from it. And this one is a wolf. <laughs> so, there's the mould that's been made from the wolf silver master pattern. Now, once you've got that mould, you can inject wax into the mould and then do the same thing again. But it's not quite as simple as that because once you've got the wax, you've lost a little bit of definition from the original um, wax that you made. So what I do is I get these things called scorpers or gravers, they're like what people do engraving with. Um, some of them, the camera's never going to be able to see this, but it's essentially, it looks a little bit like a chisel, but it's got lots of tiny little lines along the end of it. And when you rub it along a piece of wax or metal, it looks a little bit like hair. So I go over the wax wolf and define where the kind of hair pattern's going to go again. Um, and then obviously you take any fur from the mould off of it. Um, then when that gets redone, you end up with a silver casting, which I don't have any to handle. Let's use this Lynx one just to kind of show you. So you'd end up with a rough silver casting, and then I get other gravers and go and pick out where I think you know the hair pattern should be, pick up the ones with the lots of little blades on it, then try and do kind of individual hairs. Then you go over it with your files to smooth off any rough areas, uh, rotary burrs or these diamond burrs I like using to smooth out um, where the silver's been cast into kind of smooth silver again. Then you've got something that looks un not unakin to that, although then you'd set the eyes in the piece. Now, like I said, with this one, I use smoky quartz for the eyes, but it's a handmade piece of jewellery, you can have whichever eyes you like, just, <laughs> just have to ask me. Um, another thing I use as a kind of stock item that I have on my website are these grey moonstones. 
which I think look rather nice. They're, um, they just look like grey eyes, but every now and then the light catches them and they give like a glint, like a kind of cat's eye. But the difficulty with that is you have to make sure that the two cat's eye glints line up with each other or you have a wolf that's got eyes looking in different directions. Um, but that's that's not the only gemstones. Obviously you want green eyes, you can have peridot, blue eyes, you can have emeralds, uh, sorry emeralds, you can have sapphires, but that's going to be more expensive. Maybe like a, a topaz comes in three different shades of blue, so that's quite good for blue eyes. I recently made one for a client of mine in Singapore who had uh, fire opals like this in there and I don't, you probably can't see that on the camera but they're actually a very bright orange so he had a wolf with like glowing fiery orange eyes <laughs> anyway once you've got the eyes in you then oxidize the wolf now you don't have to have it oxidized if you want it just a plain silver polished wolf I can do that again the chain's been oxidized and if you wanted just a shiny silver chain that's not a problem either um, but oxidization it's ideally makes the, the chain and the piece of jewelry look like an antique um, which is actually a thing in the, the I expect this wolf to last pretty much forever. I mean anyone that buys one is going to be able to pass it on to their children and hopefully their grandchildren. So in the future, you know, I really can see this becoming a collector's piece of jewellery or an antique, legitimate antique piece of jewellery. Um, and that's another thing that's important about having as much sort of handmade uh, work going to it as possible because um, yeah, handmade things become antiques, machine made things typically not uh, no matter how good they look at the time you buy them you know it's kind of like your granny showing you a formica table and saying okay, that looks just like a marble doesn't it and you're oh, I don't know Greg <laughs> I think that I'm going to skip when you've got <laughs> handmade things no they're they're the things that can become you know valuable heirlooms in the future anyway where was I yes antiquing you can silver naturally discolors turns black turns yellow brown black over the years um, and then when you polish an old piece of jewelry there's always like little bits of darkened silver in the recesses now you can speed that up by using obviously heat and an oxidant uh, i use sulfur to uh to turn the silver black and then you can either polish it or what i've done is i've used um a glass brush to pick out the silver pieces on the wolf on his muzzle and his ears um, that leaves that kind of rather lovely satin finish that you can see around the wolf's eyes and, uh, and around his muzzle so again you don't have to have the satin finish on the wolf's eyes or eyebrows and his muzzle I could polish that a bright shiny silver and um, of course the antique on the wolf you know can be lighter or darker so you've got a black wolf or a more more grey looking one so there you go that's my um, that's my wolf pendant that I make um, you can get it from my Argent Aqua online shop or you can just buy it straight from me just leave me a, a message on Facebook or YouTube or wherever you're watching this video and uh, I can certainly make one for you now obviously pieces of handmade jewelry are not cheap but you're only paying me this is the workshop where I make them so there's no no middlemen to pay and uh, no, I don't charge very much <laughs> so thank you very much for watching and look after yourselves bye bye